Hello? Oh, hello. I wanted to inquire about hiring a room in the village hall for the evening of September the 1st. Let me just see. Uh, yes, we have both rooms available that evening. There's our main hall that's got seating for 200 people. Or there's the Charlton room. Sorry? The Charlton room. C H A R L T O N. That's got seating for up to 100. Well, we're organising a dinner to raise money for a charity, and we're hoping for at least 150 people. So, I think we'll go for the main hall. How much would that cost? Let's see. Um, you wanted it for the evening of September the 1st? Yes, that's a Saturday. So, from 6pm to midnight, that'd be £115. That's the weekend price. It's £75 on weekdays. That's all right. And I have to tell you, there's also a deposit of £250, which is returnable, of course, as long as there's no damage. But we do insist that this is paid in cash. We don't take cards for that. You can pay the actual rent of the room however you like, though. Cash, credit card, cheque. Oh, well, I suppose that's OK. So, does the charge include use of tables and chairs and so on? Oh, yes. And what about parking? Yeah, that's all included. The only thing that isn't included is... Uh, you said you were organising a dinner? Yeah. Well, you'll have to pay extra for the kitchen if you want to use that. It's £25. It's got very good facilities, good quality cookers and fridges and so on. OK. Well, I suppose that's all right. We can cover the cost in our entry charges. Right. So I'll make a note of that. Mm -hmm. Now, there are just one or two things you need to think about before the event. For example, you'll have to see about getting a licence if you're planning to have any music during the meal. Oh, really? It's quite straightforward. I'll give you the details later on. And about a week or ten days before your event, you'll need to contact the caretaker, that's Mr Evans, to make the arrangements for entry. He'll sort that out with you. And do I give him the payment as well? No, you do that directly with me. Right. Now, is there anything I need to know about what happens during the event? Well, as you'll be aware, of course, the building is no smoking throughout. Of course. Now, are you having a band? Yes. Well, they'll have a lot of equipment, so rather than using the front door, they should park their van round the back and use the stage door there. You can open that from inside, but don't forget to lock it at the end. OK. And talking of bands, I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, but you must make sure that no one fiddles about with the black box by the fire door. That's a system that cuts in when the volume reaches a certain level. It's a legal requirement. Sure. Anyway, we want people to be able to talk to one another, so we don't want anything too loud. Oh, that reminds me. We'll be having speeches. Are there any microphones available? Yep. Just let the caretaker know. He'll get those for you. Right. Now, when the event is over, we do ask that the premises are left in good condition. So there's a locked cupboard and you'll be informed of the code you need to open that. It's got all the cleaning equipment, brushes and detergent and so on. Right. So what do we need to do after everyone's gone? Uh, sweep the floors, I suppose? Well, actually, they have to be washed not just swept. Then you'll be provided with black plastic bags, so all the rubbish must be collected up and left outside the door. Of course. We'll make sure everything's left tidy. Oh, and I forgot to ask. I presume we can have decorations in the room? Yes, but you must take them down afterwards. Sure. 
and the chairs and tables should be stacked up neatly at the back of the room. I'll make sure I've got a few people to help me. Exercise 6.09 Biology is the study of life. It stems from the Greek words bios and logos. Bios means life and logos means word or study. A couple of decades ago, in the public mind, the science of biology was concerned with the study and classification of animals and other living things. It was, and still is by some, known as a soft science, an option at school that was of general interest but no match for the rigorous academic challenges of physics and chemistry. Those in the know knew better, of course, but widespread public opinion is often at variance with the truth. Recently, however, modern biology has risen to become somewhat of a Hollywood star of the sciences and now garners enormous amounts of publicity in all media, primarily due to its power to affect our everyday lives in the same way physics and chemistry recognisably do. On a different level, advances in the field of biological science are affecting the way we view our very existence in the way that discoveries by astronomers did in Europe many centuries ago. The mapping of the human gene and the cloning of animals, most famously Dolly the sheep, have grabbed headlines and are turning a whole new generation on to what used to be seen as a soft option. Admittedly, genetically modified foods are seen by many as worrying because they may be damaging biodiversity. But solving some of the most significant challenges faced by the planet today are seen as inextricably involving biology and biologists. How to feed a growing global population, coping with worldwide epidemics such as flu, malaria and AIDS, developing biofuels which may slow the destruction of the ozone layer and a host of other issues are now very much in the public consciousness. I would also argue that biology as well as being vitally important, is also astonishingly beautiful and intriguing. Will the mysteries of life ever be solved? Personally, I doubt it, since life involves constant and fascinating change. Exercise 6.0 06. Isambard Kingdom Brunel was born in 1806 and died in 1859. His father was a French engineer who worked on major projects in Britain. Isambard was born in Portsmouth and went to school near Brighton, also on the south coast of England. He spent two years studying in Paris, after which he returned to England to work with his father, notably on the Thames Tunnel, which was finished in 1843. Isambard designed some famous bridges which were at the cutting edge of technology at the time, including the Clifton Suspension Bridge, which was completed posthumously in 1864. Brunel's genius was not confined to structures going under and over rivers. In his astonishingly productive career, he designed several world-famous ships. At the age of only 31, in 1837, Brunel saw the launch of the Great Western, a steamship which regularly crossed the Atlantic Ocean. As well as ships, he was also involved in redesigning and rebuilding a number of docks in Britain to cope with the enormous amount of goods transported to and from around the world. When he was still in his twenties, Brunel became the chief engineer for the Great Western Railway and oversaw the construction of large numbers of technically astounding tunnels, bridges and viaducts. Brunel was possibly one of the greatest engineers of all time, and much of his work is still visible, in reality and in old photographs, and many of his projects are still working today, testament to a truly remarkable talent backed up by seemingly limitless reserves of drive and energy. Exercise 5.06 Words connected with meat are used in quite a large number of colloquial English phrases. For example, if someone from Britain or the USA calls you a chicken, it means you're a coward, you chicken out. 
Sometimes, if a film is a failure, some people call it a turkey. Also, if a theatre show bombs, it's a turkey. In Britain, if you're beefy, you are physically well built, strong, a hard man. Because the English national dish is roast beef, the French sometimes call an Englishman a roast beef or a roast beef. If you're sheepish, you're not covered in wool and you don't walk around windy grass fields, but you are considered timid or shy. If you can't stand someone eating very loudly and untidily, you might say that he or she eats like a pig. That might be unfair to pigs. Some pigs I've seen are quite delicate when they eat. Anyway, if someone eats especially quickly, you might say that they wolf it down. However, if you're very hungry, you might say, I could eat a horse. Although horse meat is not generally eaten in the English speaking world.